well as the scriptures. And the unfortunate problem with not doing that is that you have circular reasoning. Perhaps I'll be able to get back to this in a moment. But if you take one form of, insp of insp inspiration and you say it alone carries the whole weight of the argument, you, you have it confirming that in itself. Do you see that as to be circular reasoning? Anyway. My time's up. Thank, Thank you, you Cobb. Michael Sherman. Okay, now look. <laughs> I, uh, I really like what Kyle had to say. He's very thought, thoughtful on his thoughts on the Bible. I, I, I concur with much of that, actually. And, and Dr. Hovine, I have never heard somebody give a two-hour lecture in 15 minutes like you can. You have... <laughs> Your law students would have fun taking notes from this guy. <laughs> Get that tape recorder handy. Um, Ken says I should be skeptical of evolution. Well, I used to be. I was. I was a total skeptic of evolution. I didn't believe it. I didn't for years, for a long time. I read all, you know, all the creationist literature. I read what the creationists said was evolution, and I didn't believe it because it sure didn't make sense. Then I actually took some courses in the science of evolutionary biology and I found out, oh, well, this is nothing what the creationists were saying that it was. This is like a science. This is a whole different thing. This isn't anything what I was told. Then I realized, okay, this is, these are two different things. Science is different than religion. It's a whole different way of thinking. It's a different way of analyzing the world. It's, it's just, they're, they're really quite different fields of knowledge. And I found out I was making a huge mistake when I attempted to completely overlap them and use one to prove the other. It doesn't work that way. <clears throat> so I then became, as it were, a believer in evolution, although, although belief isn't even the right word. You don't believe in evolution. It, it either is or it isn't, based on the evidence. It's not an article of faith. Which brings me to the subject of, is evolution a religion? Look, if evolution's a religion, by which I presume Dr. Hoving means evolutionary theory and the science, not the process itself. If that's a religion, then everything's a religion. Human history, the study of human history is a religion. Archaeology is a religion. Paleontology is a religion. These, this sort of cheapens what we mean by religion. A religion is a community of believers that serves a social and moral purpose in society. Its purpose is not to test empirical hypotheses that's what science does. And science has been really good at that. And that's why in the last 400 years, science and religion have largely separated as two spheres or magisteria of, of, of looking at the world. Um, not all religions require belief in a deity, but most do, and certainly evolution doesn't. Dr. Hoving put up a long laundry list of scientists who are creationists. So what? I can give up a laundry list of theologians and deeply religious people born again who believe evolution. What, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. That's not how we operate in science. We don't go by, based on how many big name people believe it. That's not how science works. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if nobody believes evolution. It either happened or it didn't. Uh, and for the record, by the way, the last survey on this was that 40% of American scientists believe in God. So either, and, and, and virtually all of them believe in evolution. So either they're all idiots, or it's okay to believe in evolution and believe in God. It, it certainly appears to be, since most of them do. Okay, now the question is, I have for Dr. Hoving, uh, or, or even for Kyle as well. Um, if God did it, aren't you curious how she did it? Thank you. I, just, I didn't expect that from this group. Okay, <laughs> I'll take it. Um, in science, we just want to answer questions about the natural world. So if God did the fine-tuning of the universe or did this with the protons and electrons or did this with the whale flipper or whatever, how did God do it? Did God use genes? Did he use for the cosmos stuff the electromagnetic force, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force? Just gravity, some other force we don't know about. What force did God use? As soon as you ask that question, you're now doing science. That's what science is. It's just naturalism. And there's only naturalism. The rest is supernaturalism. That's not science. 
You can do that in religion if you want, but that's not science. As soon as you step out of that, you're not doing science anymore. The geological column, by the way, is quite real. In fact, it was laid down and discovered and described by creationists long before the century before Darwin. So don't let Dr. Hoven fool you to thinking that this is some concoction, conspiracy by evolutionists. It's not. The geological column was created, well, discovered by, by uh, <laughs> creationists. That's, that's not what you think it is. It's creationists created it. Finally, what is the Bible? What is the Bible? Are we to read the Bible as a book of nature? Are you really supposed to read this to find out how the universe began? Are you supposed to read it to find out exactly which deck the predators were on and the prey were on on the ark? I mean, two of every species, there's somewhere between 10 and 40 million species. Where, where did he put all these? And, and who cleaned up the mess anyway at the end of the day? And what'd they feed them? If you're asking those kinds of questions, you're missing the point of the Bible, one of the great books of Western literature. You're missing the point if you're doing all this, what I would call pseudoscience. The point of the Bible, like let's say take the flood myth, for example, and by myth I mean a story, is it, it's a destruction redemption. It's a starting over. It's a beginning anew. It's we screwed up, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start over. All the stories in the Bible are moral homilies and tales that tell things. Surely you don't want to take Deuteronomy and its admonitions to uh, kill disobedient children. Surely you don't want to take that literally. Please tell me you don't take that literally. Or that adulterous women should be killed. Please tell me you don't take that literally. And if you don't, then you don't take the Bible literally. Al, Thank you. Um, I can understand losing your faith, Michael, but what were they teaching about systematic theology at Pepperdine? Because you missed the whole New Covenant thing. Um, what? I have a question now. The, no, no, no. Moderator gets to break in here. What we're going to do is I'm going to give a question to each member of the panel. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back and allow you to recalibrate. But uh, I didn't come all the way across from California not to ask questions. Um, Michael, what did you say were the percentage of scientists who are believers in God? Did you say 70%? 40%. 4-0? 4-0. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't hear that, and I wanted to know that. Uh, Dr. Hoven, my question for you. What did Jesus say about this subject in the Gospels? Jesus said in Matthew 19, 4, and in Mark 10, 6, that the creation of Adam was the beginning. I believe that is literally true and scientifically accurate. And the implication for this conversation? These two guys are wrong. I'm right. But I scored Michael on his systematic theology, and, and again, I'll, I'll wager there are some here that would like a little expansion on that, because it, it does seem to me to be quick and not persuasive of someone who might be doubting your point of view. Of which, of which, of which part? <laughs> the, what Jesus has to say about this, Adam, say it again, doctor. Matthew 19, 4, Mark 10, 6, both are very clear. Jesus was talking about marriage and divorce, but he said, Have you not read that he which made them in the beginning, at the beginning, made them male and female? The Bible says very clearly there was no death until Adam sinned. To claim there was death before sin, you but now that, have that, I was just asking about Jesus. Your, your proof text from I'm Jesus you, I'm you. Yeah. is that. Kyle, what does Jesus say about this debate? Uh, I'd have to be, uh, hello? Testing, testing. I'd, I'd have to be honest.